Nvidia's Ampere RTX 3000 series graphics cards have arrived, and boy do they cook up some serious performance. In this video, I'm going to go through some of my favourite monitors and recommend some for all of the different RTX cards, as more performance is of course always a good thing, but if you don't have a good gaming monitor to get the most out of them, then it's actually a little bit of a wasted opportunity. All of these cards are easily capable of high refresh rate gaming, so you're going to want to grab a monitor that is at least 100Hz or more to really get the most of them. Let's start with 1080p Full HD. It's definitely not the sharpest thing out there, but if you're going to want to grab a smaller size display, or you just want to maximise FPS, then this is of course the way to go. I'm currently in the middle of testing the Alienware AEW2521HF, stupid name, but brilliant monitor. This 24.5 inch display rocks a 1 millisecond IPS panel, with a massive 240Hz refresh rate, which, and there's no other words for this, is jaw-droppingly smooth. Playing Apex Legends on this is just insane and with my current RTX 2080 Ti offering a pretty good indicator of RTX 3070 performance, this is clearly the perfect pairing. It's also rated as G-Sync compatible for reduced stutter and tearing in your games, and thanks to the current price drops, it actually offers surprisingly good value. If you're looking at a 3080 or 3090 though, then you're probably going to want to step it up- sorry, the dog's just made a smell, that is disgusting. Mate. Now if you're looking at a 3080 or 3090 and you do want to go for Full HD, then you should be aware that there are these brand new 360Hz eSports rated displays. And I'm sure they're going to be fantastic, I'm getting the ASUS one in the studio very very soon, but it's not something I can easily recommend without actually trying them out. So maybe they're going to be the best thing since sliced bread, or maybe they're just going to be another way to spend more money on something that's going to give you diminishing returns. I don't know, but get subscribed to find out. And of course, it does go without saying that you can find links to all of these monitors in the description down below, along with current pricing. Don't forget, however, that you are going to need a top-end Ryzen 7, Core i7 or higher to fully unlock these displays, as CPU frame rates can be quite limiting, especially when you're pairing them with top-end GPUs. Oh, and by the way, if you're currently following me over on Instagram and Twitter, it's at PCCentric, there is a giveaway live now, so go over and check that out at the end of the video. I'm not joking, there is. It's a good one as well. Next up, let's talk about the sweet spot of PC gaming, 1440p or Quad HD. Now I have two big recommendations, so let's start with my pick of the bunch, the LG UltraGear GN850. This is a stunning 27-inch monitor, which I do find to be a huge step up over 24-inch, and it comes packing a much sharper 1440p resolution. It's IPS, and it has a super slick 144Hz refresh rate, which, okay, isn't quite as huge as 240, but I'd say it's the right balance between image quality and smoothness, and it's perfect for all types of use, not just gaming. Like the Alienware, it's also one millisecond in response time, and it packs G-Sync compatibility. But if you're more of a die-hard PC gamer, you're only playing multiplayer, and you don't want to sacrifice the speed, but you still want that sharpness and extra screen size, then HP have something just for you, the HP Omen X27. And yes, this is 27 inches, 1440p, but 240 hertz. Honestly, I won so many games on this thing, it was immense. Insanely smooth, but bigger and sharper than those pesky 24-inch affairs. There is a bit of a drawback though, and that is the TN panel. And this is why I'd only recommend this if you're just doing multiplayer gaming. The speed is truly awesome, but the image quality is just fine. Nothing more than that. Moving on, let's talk about my favourite types of monitor, ultrawides. And I love them because they're obviously a little bit wider than normal, but they do require more graphics horsepower to, of course, get them going. But with the new RTX launch, it seems like a perfect time to make the jump to ultrawide if you haven't already. There is a huge amount to choose from these days, but try to avoid the slower 60Hz displays if possible, as you'll be choosing between image quality and speed, and we just don't want that now, do we? If your budget allows, then my pick of the bunch is LG's UltraGear 34 GK 950F. Honestly, monitor names suck, I hate them so much. But it does support 144Hz on its beautiful 3440 by 1440 IPS display. It's not quite as responsive as the one millisecond panels that you can get, but I used this as my PUBG competitive monitor for around about a year, and personally never had any complaints. You can of course save yourself a little bit of cash, and then grab the excellent Acer Predator X34 if you're happy with sticking at 100Hz, 
or you can go for the even bigger and faster 38 inch LG Ultra Gear 38 GL 950G if you've got even more to spend. It is also worth noting that you can get what's known as super ultra wide, which is of course even wider than a normal ultra wide, and I guess they didn't want to call it ultra ultra wide because that would be stupid now, wouldn't it? And these are perfect if you're going to be doing something like a racing sim or you play a lot of adventure games. The best one that I've used is from Samsung and it is just breathtaking when set up correctly. Honestly, Shadow the Tomb Raider on this thing, next level, flawless. However, as I mentioned in my review, it is quite literally a big commitment. So unless you're absolutely sure that you want this form factor, I'd recommend going for a safer option that's just going to be more widely compatible and is going to fit better on your desk. As for 4K monitors, they're of course now more relevant than ever, and actually this one is easy. I really love one of Ace's Nitros. It's called the Nitro XV273K, and it's a 4K 144Hz display, and it's going to be well suited for anyone that demands the very best image quality possible while maintaining a very high refresh rate. It's got a whole lot more useful now that the 380 is here, as clearly it's the perfect partner for anyone that works on color critical applications, such as maybe 4K video or photography, but you play a whole lot of games on the side too. If HDR is your thing though, then they do get very expensive sadly. They're still not what I would describe as a really nice price to performance option. They're all super expensive. You're basically looking for one of these G-Sync Ultimate displays. And there's two that I really like. My current daily monitor is the PG35VQ. Asus sent this one out a little while back, and when it comes to HDR, there's nothing really quite like it. It's definitely not perfect, and it is crazy expensive, but it's got a proper zone dimming system, and it's 1,000 nits of peak brightness. It just makes games like Far Cry 5 look absolutely incredible. And you can put this next to any other monitor that isn't a G-Sync Ultimate display, and I promise you, it is going to blow you away every single time you open up a compatible application. It is crazy, and there's not really any better option. Unless you want to buy a TV. Because with HDMI 2.1, 4K 120Hz is now possible on televisions. So my C10 OLED that LG graciously sent out earlier this year has suddenly become even better, as now you get perfect blacks, incredible sharpness, G-Sync support, all from a TV, but at 4K 120Hz. Here I have the 65 inch version, which again does get very pricey, but there's a 48 inch version that is far more accessible and is ideal for the ultimate gaming room. So there we go then, my top picks for Ampere. Let me know which monitor you would want to pick up down in that comment section below. Have you already decided on a GPU yet? Which one are you going to go for or is what you've got now perfectly fine? I'd love to hear from you, but do get subscribed for more videos just like this. Smash that like button if you've enjoyed it, it really helps out you wouldn't believe. Check out all of the Amazon affiliate links located down in the description below if you do want more information on any of these. But thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.